All right, so I'm going to be walking you through this conversion project. Some things we're going to be talking about in here, we're going to be talking about decimal numbers and binary numbers, and maybe you've never even touched binary and decimal conversion and you have no idea what binary is. That's totally fine. We're going to start with the basics and work forward in this video. By the end of this project, we will be pretty comfortable in converting decimal to binary numbers and binary to decimal. And then also, we are going to make a conversion um, application that is in TK Inter using Python. And we are going to be able to automatically have uh, a program that does the conversion for us instead of actually converting the numbers every single time. Now, for those of you that are watching this video for the AP exam, uh, there will be a lot of conversion between binary and decimal. So you will have to know how to do that. And there is some practice in here, but uh, we will also be making a application uh, program that allows you to convert automatically back and forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just take a look at this project file. You know, we have a few things I want to talk about in the beginning. There's really no new Python programming concepts that I want to talk about in this. It's a three page document, right? In the beginning, um, I list my walkthrough topics, talks about binary numbers, uh, and then goes right into the conversion project, right? So I'll walk you through from beginning to end. First thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull my stylus here and let's go to, I'll just go to paint because it's the easiest way for me, right? So if I pull up paint, what I want to walk through is I want to first touch into what decimal numbers are and what binary numbers are. So the numbers that we deal with on an everyday basis, like 9, 81, 72, 6, right? Those are decimal numbers, and it's because they have a base of 10. What I mean by that is, if you think about it, right, you can have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But once you get down to 9, okay, there's no number after 9. You're going to have to start back from the beginning and have a 0 there but you're gonna add one into the next column. So the next number, as many of you know, and let me see if I can find my mouse here, there it is. All right, the next number would be 10, right? So this cycle of going from zero, and this cycle of going from zero all the way down to nine, there are 10 possible numbers that can go in that column right there. Right, so that's considered the ones place. Okay, you have zero ones, you have one one, two ones, three ones, four ones, until you get all the way, and then this place right here is called the tens place. So, right, so if I were to say, uh, let's say this is my decimal, right? This would be my ones place, this is my tens place. This is my hundreds, and then I have my thousands, right? And it keeps going. So check this out. If I were to have a nine in here, that's really just nine ones. But if I have 19, really, that is one, 10, and nine ones. If you take 110 and nine ones and add them together, you get 19. If I have something like 319, that's three hundreds, one ten, and nine ones. And this is all called decimal, right? So decimal is also called base 10, meaning that there are 10 possible numbers that can go within each space here, right? So as you look at decimal numbers, know that there's always a decimal 
even if it's hidden, right after the ones. And then if I had like 319.2 and so on, like a decimal number, that's entirely different. Right now we're just following everything to the left of this decimal here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to compare at least this decimal system of counting, what all of us use on an everyday basis, right? I want to break that down and then compare that to binary numbers. Now, I'm actually just going to, um, what if we zoom out a little bit? Let's zoom out just a little tiny bit. And I'll make this a little bit bigger, right? And what if I zoom in a little bit? Let's say like 75. Let's see if it lets me do that. Press this. Oh, that's fine. All right, so I got my decimal number. I'll just move my picture. How about that? If I can, for some reason my mouse is not showing up. There we go. All right, so I've got my decimal number. All right, these are my decimal numbers. But then I have something called binary numbers. Now the prefix by, right, stands for two, right? Decimal, right? You can think of it as 10. So I have two possible numbers that I can put in each space, right? So let's start there and move that way. Right, I can either put a zero or a one. Zero or one. Those are my two different options. Remember, with base 10, I had zero through nine. Right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are 10. Okay? So with binary, I'm dealing with zeros and ones. Or on, sorry, on and off true or false okay so it's either dealing with something that's on which is a one or off which is zero so if i were to um, take a binary number the way i would count with binary numbers is to consider this as my let's say this is my ones place right and this is two this is four this is 8, and if I keep counting that way too, right, I would have 16, and maybe I'll just move down a little bit, right? I'll do 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Now, Notice that I have eight possible spaces of what I could add a number into, right? Eight, maybe you call them columns or whatever you want to call them. These are my eight spaces that I could possibly put numbers into, my zeros or ones. All right, so if you look at this and you try to make a number in binary, right? Let's say I have a decimal number. Let's say, what example did I have above here? I had 319. That's a little bit too big. What if I said, I don't know, let's try and make 10 as a binary number. What I would do is I would look all the way over to the left. Now, does 10 fit into 128? No. So I'll lay a zero there. Does 10, is 10 bigger than 64? No. Is 10 bigger than 32? No. Is 10 bigger than 16? No. Is 10 bigger than 8? Yes. So here, I'm going to put a 1, and I'm going to subtract 8 from 10. That gives me 2. Okay. Is 4 bigger than 2? Yes. Okay. So is 2 bigger than 2 here? Yes. It's the same number. So I'm going to go ahead here and put a 1 minus 2, and I get 0. So if I wanted to take the number 10 and convert it to binary, the way I would do that, the way I would write that is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Because if you look at it, 8 plus 2 gives me 10, and those have been turned on. 
All right. Another way of writing this, right? Let's say I wanted to write it as you might see something look like looking like this. 21 base 10 just means a decimal number. Convert that to binary, right? So you have a base 10, a decimal number, convert it to binary, and it has like a two inside parentheses like that. You might see it like that. So easy, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna draw eight spaces, because what we'll learn later is that each of these um, numbers that we put in, a zero or a one, these are called binary numbers, and each number is called a bit. But what we'll learn later is that eight bits is called a byte and you might have heard of like megabytes and terabytes and gigabytes we'll talk about that later but just know right now we're dealing with eight because eight bits is a byte so we're going to go ahead here and put our numbers we start with one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four and one twenty eight now you might wonder where these numbers come from since we have two possible options, this is considered two to the zero power. Two to the zero power is one. Two to the first power is two. Two to the second power is four. Two to the third power is eight. Two to the fourth power, two to the fifth power, two to the sixth power, and so on. Okay? So if we're looking at this, right? And we're wondering, well, where do you even get those numbers from? Where do you get one, two, four, eight? One, know that just start at one and double each one going to the left. So one times two times two times two times two and keep moving forward with each one, right? But really where that comes from is two to the zero power, two to the first power, two to the second power, and so on. Okay, so hopefully that explains where that came from. But if I'm trying to find 21, right? Right, I'm trying to take 21 here and base 10 which is decimal and convert it to binary what i would do is i would go through here and say all right we know it can't be 128 128 is bigger 64 is bigger 32 is bigger is 16 bigger than 21 no it's not so 16 i can put a one there and i can maybe write 21 over here 21 minus 16 gives me five okay now I can't fit an eight in there. I can fit a four though, right? Subtract four, I get one. Put a zero here. And then finally, one and one. So if I were to add all of these up, right? 16, which is, my, which is a one, right? 16 plus four plus one. 16 plus four plus one should give me 21. And it does. So if I wanted to write 21 as binary here, from a decimal number to binary, I could write 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And that's how I would take a decimal number and convert it to binary. In the same way, the way I would take a binary number and convert it to a decimal number, is if I were to just write out, let's say, I don't know, zero, one, zero, I'm making up this number in my head here, right? All right, so I count the places, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? This is my one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, excuse my handwriting, 64, 128, all right? And look at all the ones that I have. I have a one here, a one here, one there, one there, one there. And I just add them up. So I'm going to add up 64. I'm going to add up 16, 8, 4, and 1. So 64 plus 16, what do I get? I get the 10 there. I get 80. All right. Plus 8, which is where I got right here. So I added 16 and 64 here. I'm adding 8 now, that gives me 88, plus 4 is 92, and then plus 1 here, so 92 plus 1, 93, right? So if I wanted to take 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 
zero one binary and convert that to decimal, the answer would be 93. So all you really need to know if you aren't too familiar or comfortable with with exponents. <laughs> I used to be a math teacher, so um, I understand some people don't like math, and that's fine. Just know you just take one right here all the way to the right and just multiply each by two. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128 all the way on the left there. Okay? And that's how you convert back and forth between binary and decimal. Now, we're going to have some practice here, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to be uh, making sure you guys are practicing, but you're not going to be able to use the internet on your exam. So, you know, I'm sure there's many sites you could go to, convert decimal to binary, or many tools, and we're going to make a application or a program later that allows us to, to do that, but it's good to know how to do this. Uh, computers deal with zeros and ones, on and off, and it converts everything to bits, okay, to zeros and ones. These are called bits. So, you know, this is a bit right here. Um, this is a bit, 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 okay? Now, you have eight bits here, eight bits, of the name for eight bits is called a byte, B-Y-T-E, okay? So whenever you hear a byte, really that's eight bits. So if you hear something is like 100 megabytes, you would take that number and multiply it by eight, and that's how many bits there are in there, okay? So we'll be talking about that a little bit more later. Right now, that's kind of outside the scope of this lesson. I just wanted to really focus on binary and decimal conversion back and forth, okay? If you are still kind of confused about how this all works, uh, please make sure to just maybe just rewatch it. And if there's still a question, I can always make a separate video going through binary to decimal conversion. All you really need to know is, you'll see a lot of times things will look like this, right? You'll see like um, 203 base 10, convert this to um, binary, right? So all you would do is the first step, I'm trying to simplify this down into steps, right? First step is to write out Let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little dashes, right? From there, start at one and then just multiply by two, multiply by two, by two, all the way across. And take your number, 203, right? Is there a 128 in there? Yes. And you put that in there, 128, right? If I'm actually subtracting here, right? Taking away a one here, putting a nine. That's 13, right? So that gives me a 5, 7, 75. The next one, 64, minus 64. That gives me 11, right? So there's a 1 there. 0 and 32, 0 and 16. A 1 in the 8, right? Subtract 8. That gives me 3, right? 0. And I'll skip a step here and not write this out, but 2 plus 1 is 3, so 2 and 1 both go in there. And if I were to add all these up, if I add up 128, 64, 8, 2, and 1, I should get 203. So my answer here would be 1, 1, whoops, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so that's uh, just an intro to decimal and binary conversion, and you are going to be um, assessed on that in your knowledge. So if you look back at the document here, I'll talk briefly about each, about decimal and binary conversion. It says, the way a computer represents data internally is different from the way the data interpreted and is, is interpreted. I'm going to go ahead and correct this. I can't see in data are, data is, from the way data is interpreted and displayed for the user. Programs are used to translate data into 
a representation more easily understood by people, right? We like having a nice user interface. We were always talking to a black and white screen all the time and, and we didn't have color or being able to see things. I know I wouldn't be as interactive with a computer then. I'm a very visual person. I like to see things. So that's always nice to be able to have that in mind. Explain how data can be represented using bits, all right? Data value can be stored in variables, lists, or items, or even standalone constants. We've talked about all of this. We've talked about lists, we've talked about variables, we've talked about constants, right? And can be passed as input to or output from procedures, right? I think that was a big part of the uh, create task as well, was making sure that we understood the importance of list variables and how they're able to be passed into and out of procedures. I'd say if there's like one biggest thing from the AP class from the create task, it's being able to learn this right here. That's an important statement. Uh, computing devices represent data digitally, meaning that the lowest level of components, the lowest level of components, meaning that the lowest level components of any value are bits. Sorry, I couldn't read there. The lowest value of anything are bits, zeros and ones. So everything you're doing on a computer is processed down to zeros and ones. It's kind of crazy to think about it. You don't necessarily need to know how that happens right now. Just know that everything you do, every input, every output, is all just a bunch of zeros and ones. The fact that down here at the bottom, I can see like my face and happening in, in real motion right now, or in real time, in real motion, in real time, that's because of zeros and ones, being able to pass through the computer of, of color, of movement, of representation. That's all right there. So uh, a bit is shorthand for binary digit. Right, the same way how we had our digits, our ones place, our tens place, our hundreds place when dealing with decimal numbers, base ten numbers, right? For uh, for binary numbers, each digit is a bit, which is short for just binary digit. They just took out this, right? They figured, all right, binary, all right, we'll take out the first half of that and just end it in it, right? And we'll take all those letters out in between and we'll make bit. Right, that's where they came up with that. So if you're ever wondering where the name bit came from, it just means binary digit. That just means zero or one. Okay, all our bits we were talking about. And we also mentioned before that a byte is eight bits. Now we've talked about abstraction before, and really it's a process of reducing complexity, making things easier, being able to communicate with things in a graphical user interface is an example of abstraction. I mentioned the example I use all the time is if you turn a light switch on, you don't know how you don't need to know how electricity works in order to use a light switch. You don't need to know you don't need to be a mechanic in order to drive a car. All you need to know in the beginning are the what's. And if you want to know the why's and how things work, you can. It's just not always necessary. So do know that. Abstraction is the process of removing complexity or removing details by focusing on the main idea, right? When I flip the light switch on, lights turn on. It's the main idea behind it. I don't need to know all the electricity behind it. <laughs> by hiding details irrelevant to the question at hand and bringing it together related and useful details, abstraction reduces complexity and allows one to focus on the idea. And that's really the point of this class. Um, you know, the principles of things, if you're looking at it, you're not really going into a lot of the detail. We explore a little bit of detail, but the more you learn, the more you understand the main ideas, the more we can dig deeper. Okay, I guess that goes with any subject. Bits are grouped to represent abstractions. These abstractions include, but are not limited to, numbers, characters, and color. The same sequence of bits may represent different types of data in different contexts. It says to explain the consequences of using bits to represent data. In many programming languages, integers are represented by a fixed number of bits, which limits the range of integer values and mathematical operations on those values. The limitation can result in overflow or other errors. And, you know, we're just touching on this now, but you'll see in later programs that we create, sometimes the 
computer can't process what you're typing in. Uh, sometimes we've tried to take out all of these, uh, we've tried to abstract so much detail away that sometimes we don't get the full picture. And there will be errors at times that we might not even necessarily know the answers to. And originally, that's okay. Don't be too freaked out by it. Know that um, there are some rounding issues when it comes to computers, which we'll talk about later when we get further into data. But for the most part, know that we're going to be covering these principles here. Other programming languages provide an abstraction through which the size of represent representable integers is limited only by the size of the computer's memory. This is the case for the language defined in the exam reference sheet. Okay, the exam reference sheet you'll receive on for those of you guys taking the AP exam, you guys will receive that for the exam. Okay. In programming languages, the fixed number of bits used to represent real numbers limits the range and mathematical operations of these values. This limitation can result in round off and other errors. Talk about that more later. Some real numbers are represented as approximations in computer storage. Okay, and, and that's, like I said, kind of a, a little tiny nitpicking thing with computers, which we'll get into later. All right, for binary numbers, calculate the binary base 2 equivalent of a positive integer, base 10, and vice versa. This is what we just did. How I wrote everything out there. Compare and order binary numbers. So number bases including binary and decimal are used to represent data. There's also the different number bases, right? You have decimal, you have binary, which we're talking about now. You also have octal and hexadecimal. I used to teach them um, in previous classes, but they've taken that off of the AP exam, which I can always, if you guys are ever interested in, in conversion to hexadecimal. There's some really uh, uh, fun games to play in order to help you in the process of that that maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe touch on at some point. But we're just going to talk about decimal and binary numbers. We won't worry about octal and hexadecimal. Those are base 8 and base 16. Um, binary base 2 uses only combinations of the digits 0 and 1. Okay, we talked about that. Base 10 is digits 0 through 9. As with decimal, a digit's position in the binary sequence determines its numeric value. And numeric value is equal to the bit's value, 0 or 1, multiplied by the place, which is what we talked about down here, right? The place down here, uh, 128 times 1, 64 times 1, 8 times 1, 2 times 1, and so on. I, I walked through all that already. The place value of each position is determined by the base raised to the power of the position. Positions are numbered starting at the rightmost position 0 and increasing by 1 for each subsequent position to the left. So that's just how all number systems work here. So like even if I had base 10, right? Um, I guess maybe I'll, I'll try and squeeze this up here, right? right? This is really 10 to the 0 power. This is 10 to the first power if we're talking about decimal numbers. 10 to the second power, this is 10 to the third power. So 10 to the zero power is one. 10 to the first power is 10, this is a tens place. 10 to the second power is 100, this is my hundredth place. 10 to the third power is a thousand, which is a thousandth place. So that's where those numbers come from, right? Well, like I mentioned before, this is two to the zero power, two to the first power, second, third, two to the fourth, fifth, six, and two to the seventh. So it starts at zero and works all the way out. So that's all that is saying right there. All right. So that's all the really the new content that I wanted to get into for this week. But we're going to move into the project. Now that we know um, the basics of binary to decimal conversion and decimal to binary, is there a way that we can make life easier and create a program that does that for us? We'll talk later. We'll talk more about that in a little bit here in this project. So it says, open up a new Google Doc, name it Conversion Project, your name, replacing your name with your actual name. Okay. Second thing is to watch this video. 
Okay, this video is about six minutes long. Um, it has the uh, founder. No, no, no. That's the, the next video, actually. Um, this is just a video from code.org walking through um, just a lot of stuff that I already mentioned in this uh, lesson, but it just reinforces it for you and might be a different perspective that you might like. Okay, so there's a video there, really how computers work, binary and data. Uh, the second thing is, it says, well, step three, it says set a timer for 10 minutes and play this game. All right, check this out. So if I go here and it's called the binary game, and I click try it, how do I make 14? Well, I make 14 by saying eight, four, and two. They give me 14. How do I make seven? Four, two, and one, two. So it's kind of like it removes it. I want to say it was like Tetris, but I guess it's not like Tetris. This is 14. Uh, this is eight. Notice it's going back and forth. This is 10. It gives you cheat. It helps you on the bottom. So I almost said cheating. It's not necessarily cheating, but you're not going to necessarily have that on the exam. All right? How do you make six? How do you make seven? And notice my score and my level is going up over here, right? So 16 plus 4 is 20. And then how do you make 5? Well, that's a thing. You're going to have to figure that out. So if I do, that's 24 plus 1, right? 16, that's easy. 32. Um, and as you go through, notice that more it gets faster and faster and the numbers get a little bit harder here. So 16 plus 8 is 24 plus 2 is 26. Oh, I clicked in there, it didn't work. All right, so you gotta be quick with it. Um, and play this game, right? And I originally said, and I'll stop here. Eventually, if you look at it, it will build all the way up to the top and have, um, it'll run out of space. Of course, I'm saying that now, it's not happening. But you'll eventually end up losing. So I'm like, I <laughs> and um, you know, it'll keep track of your level, your score, uh, and eventually I'll wait for it to end. Give it a second here. And it says game over, right? So if you lose, when you lose, play again for ten minutes or so in the project. I said set time for ten minutes and play this game. That's the game. Let's take a screenshot of your highest score. So like if this was my highest score, I would just Take a screenshot here, and then it says take a screenshot of your highest score and paste it, right? Um, so that way I see that you were actually going through and playing the game. All right, so make sure you're, uh, you actually do that and you paste the screenshot in the document. Then it says watch this video, and this video was a video I was originally thinking of. This just walks through a little bit about images and pixels and actually features the founder of Instagram. Um, and talks about how you would uh, be able to change those colors or change colors on a computer. And it talks a little bit about bits and bytes and talks about how those number combinations are changed. It talks about resolution, it talks about density. I want you to watch that video. And then it says answer the questions below. It says what is, re what is resolution, what is density. Those answers will come from this video. Step eight says RGB stands for red, green, blue. These values are put together to create any color. It says visit the website, and if I click on it, right, and it says adjusting the scales RGB gives you black and, or sorry, adjusting the scales to RGB 000 gives you black, and RGB 255-255-255 gives you white. Right, so if I were to play with this, right, the interesting thing is if you were to add up all of these numbers, like if I were to say, well, let me just do this. If I were to say one, 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 right? Say this is binary and say convert this to base 10 decimal. This is equal to 255. So think about that real quick. All right, knowing that is 255, the max that you can come to is 255. So know that a byte 
can, can control this as a byte, this is a byte, and this is a byte, and you would combine these three together in order to make a color. So the point of this is if you look at it, you can mess with the scales and create different colors, right? If, you, if I do full red and full green, I should get yellow here, right? So I'll move this out of the way. 255, right? And there's different shades of yellow, right? I can move this through. You would still call that yellow, I guess, right? But notice it's 255, 239, zero. So you're going to be playing with these. Do notice if I move them all to 255, I'll just type 255 there, it gives me white. If I move them all to zero, it gives me black. And what it asks me to do in step nine, it says adjust the scales and try and create the colors below. They do not have to be perfect. And then take a screenshot and copy and paste it in your Google Doc. So what you do is the first color was pink, I believe. Yeah, pink. So you try and move these scales. Let me see. What if I did some red? Um, I don't know. Maybe I try and mess with the blue a little bit because I know. Yeah, maybe. If I say, maybe I'll move red down a little bit too. Right, that gives me more of a purplish color. What if I move this up a little bit? Right, and you know, you could call that pink. You could call this pink. You could call like that hot pink. It doesn't matter. There's no perfect. One of the big things I stress is um, these numbers do not have to be perfect. Um, they do not have to be perfect. I'll put in bold. So what I would do is, if I thought this is the pink that I like, right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of it and then paste it in my Google Doc. So take a screenshot of each of these. So make pink, make turquoise, make gold, brown, yellow. I already showed you pink and yellow, right? But go ahead and do that. And the point of this is just to play around with it and realize that red, green, and blue, red, green, and blue can make any color. Okay, in your Google Doc, Tell me which color was the easiest to make of these and which one was the most difficult and were any of the co color combinations surprising, right? Were you surprised that in order to make pink, there was a good amount of blue in it, right? That there was a lot of red, about a good amount of blue and a little bit of green in order to make this pink color. Was that surprising me and why? Um, and then it says on a physical sheet of paper, uh, convert the given decimal numbers to their binary equivalent. Okay, so you would go and do that. We've noticed it's just some extra practice with conversion. And the same thing, these are binary numbers, convert them to decimal numbers. Practicing. It's giving you some practice. Um, then it says, well, on the sheet of paper, so I want you to actually, on a physical sheet of paper, do this. So get out a piece of paper and do the conversion. Once you're done, take a picture of it. So whatever you did in step 11, step 12, take a picture of whatever your conversions look like, show your work, right? And send it into your Google Doc, the same Google Doc that we've been using throughout this. Okay, so now we're to the programming side. All right, now I think the point of this class is to look at things through the lens of a programmer. Say, all right, so why is all this important, right? So I've learned something. How can I make life easier? Like usually you're making a program that either solves a problem or something you like, or maybe even both, right? So how can I, and, and looking at step 14, it says programmers create solutions to make life easier, to solve problems. So here's the question. Using what I've learned so far about Python, can I write a program that automatically converts numbers? The answer is yes. So I'm going to write a program with Python's TK inter module that converts binary numbers to decimal numbers and decimal to binary. All right, so we're going to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to kind of design what I want it to look like, right? So let's say, all right, let's, I'll make this a little bit smaller, maybe. All right, let's say, well, let's say this is, I'll create a label maybe at the top that looks like binary to decimal. 
right? This will be a label. And then I'm going to add, this is just what I'm thinking, right? I'm going to add eight text boxes or entries, right? I think it's eight. Yep. And a user will type in the number zeros or ones. And then maybe I'll have a button here that says, like, oh, it's a bad rectangle. Not the best artist, as you can see here. And maybe I'll just say, like, convert. And then down here will be a label with the answer. All right, and then also I'm going to do a the other part of my app, or my keep calling it app, my program is going to be decimal to binary. And the user is going to type in a number here. This will be an entry. And let me see if I can make this screen a little bigger. Right? Let me zoom back in. All right, so. Maybe I'll say, all right, decimal to binary, and they'll type in a number, and then there'll be, oops, and then there'll be a convert button that they press to convert it, and then it gives them a binary number. So this right here is going to be the decimal number that's been converted to, and this down here, I'll say decimal answer. And this down here will be my binary answer. All right, so really, it's really like two programs in one, right? So it's almost like everything above this line does one thing. This is if you're trying to convert a number. You might only even use this program for the top one and never even use it for the bottom, right? But I'll go ahead and throw it all in one program together. So really, everything up here, this is binary to decimal conversion. Okay, I'll put a, this will be a label, right? Decimal, binary decimal conversion. And then this will be a label down here, right? So maybe I'll just say like, I'll make that a label. I'll make eight entries. I'll put a button. And this is going to be a label down here, too. Maybe I'll just circle them so that way they don't get confused, right? So that's just like notes, I guess, saying what it's going to look like. And then this down here, we're going to need another label down here. And we're going to need entry. And we're going to need a button. And then this down here is going to be a label. All right, so I'm just visualizing it how I, how I think I want it to look. Um, and that's probably in the very end. And let me go ahead and pull this up a little bit. In the very end, this is what my app is. Obviously, this is a very rough drawing. This is around what I want it to look like. So a user would go in and type in a one or a zero, one or zero in each of these boxes. You would click the convert button and when you click the convert button it would give me my answer down here right i need an answer down here and then down below right i would type in a number so maybe i typed in like 128 right and click convert it would then convert it down here and give me the answer in binary all right so that is the program we want to make so how are we going to make it it's definitely going to involve a list, um, and we can probably do this in like three functions. One, I'd say we need a function in order to compile these numbers, right? We want to. I would like. I think. I think the way that I'm going to do this is put them in a list. So use like the get method from an entry and take each of those numbers so when i click this convert button it's going to take all those numbers and put them in together and then be able to traverse through that list to be able to loop through that list 
and give each one values, 128, 64, knowing the place value of each, and then converting and multiplying it by each. So let's go ahead and try this. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to open up idle here. You can use any file editor that you want. And I'm going to save this as conversion. And I'll say the 15th. And we are at 12.08 p.m. All right. So first off, just for reference, right, maybe I just list the places. Right? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Where is that? Eight, right? And that's going to give me, I'll say like 128. And this is 64. This is 32. I'm just writing the places. This is just comments at the top here, right? I'm just writing these for reference as I go through this. Four, two, and one whoops and one not necessary to do that i'm just using it I, i'm a very visual person so all right so i'm thinking of the way i want my app to look like right the first thing i'm going to have to do is i'll say from tk anchor import everything right and we'll call the main window root and we'll use from the tk class then we'll say root dot main loop, which keeps it open. All right, so what are some things I want in there? Well, take a look back. I want my label and eight entries. I'll focus on that first. My able, my able, my label and eight entries. So the top label, I'll say binary to binary to, uh, you know, I'm just going to say binary to decimal, so B, D, okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, all right, this is a label, it's going to be stored in the root, and the text for it is just going to say um, binary. And then I'll just make that arrow, right? And that's, I'm just drawing the arrow, arrow there. Binary to decimal. That's just a text for it. <clears throat> and then, um, what else am I going to make? I'll make my entries. So I'll go down and say, um, I want to say like entry one, entry two, entry three. I'll say, I'll just say binary one entry. And it's going to be an entry. They're going to type, the user's going to type something in there. And then I'm going to copy this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So binary two, binary three, binary four. And what I'm creating here, I'll show you in a second if you guys are kind of lost. What I'm just creating are, I didn't know what to name them, um, these eight um, right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? Um, okay, now I'm going to need a button and I'm going to need an answer label. So a convert button. All right, so I'll say convert. Um, and I'll say convert BD binary to decimal. Convert BD button is equal to. I'll assign it button that's going to be in the root and the text. Uh, we'll just say in all caps, I'll say convert. 
Okay, and then after I do the button, I need the answer. So I'll say the what did I what did I call it there? I said the decimal answer, right? So I'll say the ants for the answer, decimal answer. Uh, I'll do it like this. Let's see, decimal. And then I'll say label. So the decimal answer label is going to be a label. And to start off, it's going to be blank. I'm not going to put anything in there to start off. <clears throat> All right. So let's see here. Now that I've done this, um, I'm going to have to make a nice grid and put them in it. So <clears throat> I'm going to say BD label dot grid and I'm going to say row is equal to zero because that's going to be on top. The first row is along the top is zero and I'm not going to say a certain column. I'm just going to say column span and it's going to go across eight and it's because I know there's going to be eight entries and I want it to like span all the way across all eight. All right, so I'm just going to start with that. Let's see what it looks like in the end. And then I'll do binary one entry dot grid and I'll say row equals one and I'll say call to zero. Alright, and I am gonna be lazy here and I'm gonna copy this two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is gonna be my binary two entry. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, after I've done that, uh, this was row one, column zero. So now we're going to just say column one, two, three, four, and all the way to seven, six, and seven. Right, so let's just see where we're at right now. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see if we get any errors. Right, these are some big one, two. Wow, there's some, I might have to change the, the width of them in a second here. Right, because look how wide, look how wide those entries are. Right, you type them. I only need to type one number in. So maybe we set the width. All right, so let me go back to that. And you'd set the width over here. So I'd say width is equal to 2. Uh, let's just try that with one of them. Let's see what the first entry looks like. Yeah, that looks good. We're going to do that. So I'm going to copy that bit of code right there. And just paste it down. So now this should look a little nicer. Watch this. With the two in each of those boxes have, yeah, this looks a little cleaner. Well, I don't want to have the zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. Right? Now we need to pack the rest of this stuff, right? So <clears throat> come down here. Let's see. Um, I need the button. So I'll say convert the binary decimal button. And it's going to be a button, it's going to be in the root and text. Uh, what am I doing? Don't mind me. I need to create, I'm like creating another button. I'm like, what am I doing? All right, grid, it's going to be in row two. And same thing. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll say column span. I'm spinning eight. I wonder if that makes like a really long. I think it should be good. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool, got it. The reason I said I did the same thing with the the top label because I just wanted to show up in the middle. If you see, like when I do column span, that just means it spans across all these columns, puts it in there, right? So it just puts in the middle of all of that. All right, so I got that. And then 
I also have to put the answer, right? So I'll say the decimal answer label dot grid, and I'll say that's row three. And I'll do the same thing. I'll say column span eight. Now you probably can't see the label because there's nothing in it right now, but there should be like a blank space for it. Yeah. So the answer is going to go in here. All right. Um, maybe I'll also change this title. Right. I'll say root that title, and I'll call this. Um, Say binary decimal, sorry, decimal, decimal, binary conversion. So if I run it, if you wanted to see the title up there, it's up there, but. Probably not going to be, be able to see it, if it unless I make the unless I make the screen bigger, which I really don't care that much about right now. Um, all right, so we did that. So if we run it, right, we have zero one one zero zero one zero one. I click convert, and you convert my number. Nope, we haven't made it do anything, right? We haven't even talked about a command. We haven't made any functions. So now we have to start thinking about things. So all right, if the user typed this in, right? How would I naturally convert it? And I look at this place, and this would be 128. So whatever this number is, times 128, plus whatever this number is, times 1, plus whatever this number is, or multiply this times, sorry, 128 times 64 times 32 times 16, and you just move through. Right? So how do we make that work? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to take all of these entries, right? And I'll just say these are my binary entries, right? And I'm going to create a list of all of those entries. So I'll say like binary one entry. Copy this. Copy it, right? And then two. And this I accidentally copied the blank space. I was trying to fix it real quick. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's going to be inside. What did it like? I not do over here. No, I didn't put it on the list. All right. So binary one entry, binary two entry, three, four, five, six. And then I'll say seven and eight. All right, done all that. Uh, I create a list of all my entries because my I, my thought is I'm eventually going to have to loop through all these entries and determine the value of it. And rather than creating separate functions for each, I can create one function that just goes through each of them. That's my thought. All right, so let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> let's define a function that compiles all of our numbers together. All right, so. Um, I'll call this function, let's see, if I'm putting all the binary entries together, I'm just going to call this compile. Um, compile number. Right. And so what I want to do is, and I'm talking out loud as I'm thinking, I want it to take each of those values, so I want it to loop through, and I want it to put it inside of, um, I guess, one, zero, and add that to a list. 
maybe. So maybe we could create a list called like um, call it the binary num called binary number, right? And I'll create a blank list. Okay, start with that. Yeah. I think I'm going to start with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull. What do I need to if all the values are there? Hmm. So let me think. Because if I have a binary number, right? Maybe I have to make that global. All right, so let's do this. Let's just go ahead and say compile number. Whenever this function is run, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the values, so all the numbers and entry, okay? And I'm going to loop through and put it inside this binary number list. So well, if I'm already putting it in a list, then I guess there's really no need to, to have that there. So what if I did, um, I'll probably end up backtracking on this. What if I just say convert to decimal? Okay, so like I said, what you're going to have to eventually do is you're going to have to go through each of the values. And if I know what the first value is, okay, you're going to have to multiply it by, so the first, so in the list, I'll loop through this. I'll say 4 i in binary degrees. So for each value in the list, right? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it, the first value by 128. So it's going to take maybe I have to use Ah, you know what? Backtrack a little bit. I'm not trying to confuse you guys, but what I'm going to do is go back to what I was doing before, right? So I'll say, what I even call that? Compile. Binary, right? And what I'll do is I'm going to loop through. So for I in this right here watch this for uh, for i so for all the values in binary entries it's going to loop through each one okay and it's going to get the value of it so i would go back to creating my list of i'd say my binary number And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to say binary number dot append. I'm going to add on to the list whatever I'll say, whatever I get inside of the value that was entered inside the entry. So I dot get, the get gets the number inside of it and it adds it to the last thing in the list. So maybe if I like do this, um, so compile binary, I've gone through and done that and it will put all of those in this binary number list. So then I'll actually have integers in there. So maybe I even add an integer. I'll just say integer. Just put it right in there like that. Just making sure that they know that these numbers in there are integers. 
So that's going to compile my numbers and add them all in this binary number list. So maybe if I come down here where it says command and I'll say um, and is equal to compile binary. And then at the very end here, I'll have it print out my binary number. Okay, let's see, let's run it. Let's see what happens. Let's see if there's any bugs. All right, so if I say like one, zero, one, oops, zero. One zero one zero one zero convert, and it made that list for me. One zero one zero one zero one zero. Okay, cool. So that worked. So what I did was, I just compiled a list. I created a list. I took whatever, um, whatever values were in these entries and stored them in a list. And I took that. I converted it into integers. So I know now that my binary number list, once I once I create it, it looks like this. Right. And maybe I like change a number here, right? And click on convert again. And that re-adds everything to the list. So eventually I gotta go back and change that. But it's adding everything to the list, which is good. Okay. So we're on the right track. So the first thing we did was we compiled the number. So we actually want to be able to do that, add those values into a list. Like I said, this is just the way how my brain's working. Maybe you guys think of an entirely different way. So the print was just there just to, to see if it worked. All right. So once we've actually compiled the binary number, now we want to convert. Uh, and we want to convert to um, decimal. All right, so how are we going to do this? Just clean it up a little bit. So what I want to do now is look at each of the numbers in my binary number list. So for each value in that, I'm going to have to loop through. So for i in binary number, And for each value, I'm going to have to multiply whatever i is. I'm going to have to multiply it by 2 to the power of, so I'll say, 2 to the power of, and then I'll have to create a num, right? So I'll say like, um, I'll say like e for exponent. So I'll start off the exponent. I'll set it equal to 7. Um, so I'll say to whatever E is, so it will raise it to that power. So, and then it will go to the next one. So I'm going to have to store this in something. So I'm going to have to create a global variable called, maybe I'll call it like binary or I'll call it like decimal answer. I'll originally assign it to zero. And I'll say like decimal answer. I'm going to be adding to it each time. Just at zero right now, I'm adding to it whatever number is stored in there, a one or a zero, one times, and then the decimal. So two to the seventh power is 128, right? So if there's a one in this column, it's going to take 1 times 128, and it's going to add that to the answer. All right, so um, that's that. And then I'm going to have to, let's see, and then moving on to the next one. So if I said, all right, in there, 2 to that, would there need to be 1? Num. So I'm going to have to subtract one each time. So I then have to say like E minus one, right? Because each time this number is not going to remain at seven, right? 
it's going to it's going to multiply it to to the power of e and i could even like if those of you guys that like things spaced out right two to the power of e so two to the seventh power times i here which is always going to be a one or a zero um and then i'm going to lower it by one all right and that's going to be stored in the decimal answer so it's going to go through each of these values in the binary number all right so that should be stored as the decimal answer maybe at the end maybe i'll test it out here and i'll just say like oh decimal space answer what am i doing um so i'll say like decimal answer i'll print it out and then i'll run it let's see what happens oh, i don't have to convert decimal right so maybe i'll change this to say convert decimal down here okay and then i'll come up here and the first thing i'm going to do is i'll compile binary do that first and then run through and do this all right so let's go through and let's test this let's see if it works convert decimal all right okay let's run it so i'll say i'll make an easy one zero 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 one one so it should give me three okay. Um, local variable decimal answer reference before assignment. Okay, so I'm going to have to say um, say global global decimal answer. They should fix it. Let me go ahead and run it here. And I'll do the same thing. Zero, 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 one, one. It should give me three. And it gave me three. Um, pretty cool. So it actually worked there. But we don't want it to print it out. We want it to. Um, well, I guess also, once it's done this, instead of printing it out, we're going to have to make the label, the decimal answer label, right? We're gonna have to change the text. So we'll say like decimal answer label dot configure. And we're gonna configure the text in it to say um, the answer. So the text is going to be the decimal. All right. And then after it shows the answer, I'm going to, let's do this. Let's go ahead and clear out the list, the binary number list. So that way each time we do it, it's not using the same list. So binary number dot clear. That clears everything from the list. Whoops, sorry. Let's run this. Let's see if it works. All right, so let me test it out. Zero, whoops, zero, 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 one, one, convert, and it gives me three. All right, maybe I changed the zero, this should give me two. Uh oh, give me five. Oh, because I have to set my decimal answer to zero, two. All right, so I'll say decimal. Answer is assigned zero to. All right, so maybe I'll, yeah, let me set that each time there. All right, let's fix that bug. Zero, 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 one, one. That should give me three. All right, and this should give me two. There we go. And let's try this. So this is four, two, six, seven. Convert seven. Um, if I want more to it, right? One thirty-five. Do all of these. This should give me two fifty-five. Now do you know that this this simple version of this does not stop someone from entering like an eight there, right? 
I didn't do that because I just want it to work right now. If you guys want to go through and, and make sure that someone doesn't enter another number, then that's fine. You can do that. I'm just trying to go through the simplest version of it um, and just make sure we are getting it to work. And then we can always go back and do other things with it, right? Even like design it, make it look nicer. So my binary to decimal side is working. And it's funny because, you know, I, w I always go through and I, I, I write the, the code uh, weeks in advance just to kind of like, I know this project's coming up. Let me make sure that I'm, I'm kind of aware of what I should be doing here when presenting it. Because when I'm, when I'm writing this code in front of you guys, like I don't have, um, I don't have a lot of wiggle room when I mess up. So I usually write it once ahead of time. And I'll tell you this, the second time I've written it here, it's definitely different from the first time I wrote it. I'm sure the variable names are different. If I were to pull up like what my code looked like before, uh, and I'll probably do that at the very end, it will probably look a lot different. I remember, I mean, similar concepts, same things, same final answer, but probably look different. All right, so that was the first part of it, right? We have successfully completed, I'm gonna go ahead, um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put like a nice green check mark. Like, hey, we did that, that works out. All right, so now we gotta move to the bottom. And decimal to binary, text, convert. So you know what I'm gonna do here? Watch this, I'm just gonna do this. Um, I'm just gonna copy some of this. And I'm gonna paste it. Uh, binary to decimal label, I'm now gonna call that decimal to binary label. And I'm going to name that decimal to binary. Okay, so instead of I'll take out, I don't need all these entries here, right? On is one, and it's going to be a decimal entry. So I'll say dec for decimal entry. And I won't make it with two, I'll make a little bit. Um, I'll do three How about that. And then the convert binary to decimal, I'm gonna convert decimal to binary, right? And the command is eventually gonna be different. So I'll just take that out for now. And the binary answer, I'll call it the bin answer for binary answer, is gonna be a label. Okay, I don't need any of this this list here. This one's gonna be easier, right? This one's not gonna be as bad. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of all this, to be honest with you. Oh, no, not get rid of it. No, 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 don't get rid of it. <laughs> I didn't, I never copied it. That's why I don't wanna get rid of it. All right, so we've gone through and we've gridded this out, right? So maybe I'll just, maybe I'll copy this, move this down here. And I'm going to go ahead and enter these into a grid as well. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll say dot grid. Uh, we use row three. Okay, let's go ahead and say this one's going to be in row four, whoops, row equals four, and the column span is still gonna be eight. And this is just my label that goes across the top that says decimal to binary conversion. <clears throat> okay, and then um, my decimal entry is gonna be below it, so I'll say like row five. And say column span eight to column span eight. And my button, right? I never even said dot grid here. I need to do that. Luckily, a lot of times I catch myself before I go too far. Column span eight. And then this last one, I'll say dot grid. This in row seven. So we're just going to see what it looks like first. Um, might not look very good. I'm just going to. Obviously, we have to be coding with it. 
what didn't it like? Oh, I didn't add a parenthesis here. All right. Let me see. All right. Good enough. They'll enter a number of data like 55. That'll fit in there. Cool. All right. So, hmm. how do we want to do this? So, I don't need to compile any numbers or anything like that, do I? Numbers are still running. Um, we're going to have to think about this one. All right, so I want to create a function that converts, converts to binary. All right, so I don't know. Let me just think. I'm just going to think out loud here. So if I have like a number like 64, I want to take that to binary. Okay, I would take the number and say, is it divisible by 128? Okay, if yes, then um, right now it's no. So is it divisible by that number? So two to the seventh power, two to the sixth power, two to the fifth power, two to the fourth power, and so on. Okay, so hmm. Let me see how I want to do this. So I'll have to create a, I'll create an answer called my binary answer. So it originally to zero. Okay. And I'll have a crack of my screen. And then I'm going to have to, Actually, you know what? I'm going to use it as a string because if I try doing it as a number, the zeros might not show up before. So I'm going to use this as a string. So basically, like if my number was like 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, this 0 might not show up ahead. So I want that 0 there, especially if there's like a bunch of zeros out in front. Um, I'm going to just make it a string. So we'll add to that string. Um, okay, so <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll say um, because I want it each time to be subtracting to like I really want it to be like whatever your number is. So I guess I guess I'll do this. I'll say. Um, create like a decimal number just to like follow with the way. Right, so I'll say my decimal number. So the number that I get here, so I'll say global it doesn't need to be global but I'll say like I already done the decimal answer down there decimal number that's what I want decimal number is going to be uh, I'm going to go down to get whatever the user types in to the decimal entry. So I'll say decimal entry dot get, and I'll also convert that to an integer. Okay, so whatever the user types in, type in 64, right? Um, how would I convert that? So what I'm going to have to do is um, I'll say maybe do like for I in range we'll say There's so many different ways of doing this when I'm thinking about it. What I want it to do is I want it to go through 
and keep on dividing the number each time. And if it's divisible by that number, add a zero or a one. So maybe I'll do um, for i in range of say eight. Okay. Um, I'm going to take my decimal number. Actually, I'll take my decimal answer. First, let me slow down a little bit. Let me take my decimal number that I just created, and I'm going to um, divide it by two to the whatever the exponent is. So maybe I say like exponent starts at seven right and it's going to divide it and then afterwards i'm going to have to subtract one from it each time um and i'm going to have to store this as something so i'll just say mm, New num. Okay, and I'm going to divide it. So I'll take my decimal number, divide it by whatever that gives me, and that gives me my new number. Oh, hmm. So it's going to divide it by, if that is, I'm going to write an if here. If decimal number hmm. Let me see here. All right, let me let me let me figure this out. So, I'm going to loop through, and it's going to divide by starting off, divide my number by two to the seventh power. Okay, so um, if it divides equally, right? If it's if it does divide equally, so the modulus. I feel like I'm I'm just getting thinking too much into it. So for I I don't think I have to, have to do all of this. I think I'm overthinking this. I'll say something like I'm definitely overthinking this. In range, so If decimal number is greater than um, Say two to the e power. So if it is greater than that, I'd say um, binary answer to the sign binary answer. 
plus whatever is already on it and then adding one to like just adding the number and then else if it's not then take the binary answer and assign it to binary answer plus zero So that. Okay, so I'm just going to add one to it if it's greater than whatever it is. And then I'm going to down there subtract. Each time it goes through, I'm going to subtract one from there. All right, let me see if this works. So it's going to go through eight times. And each time, well, where did I use I? I didn't use I. So for I in range, so all right. I'm not sure if this works or not, but we're going to find out. Right, so at the very end, I'm going to say that my binary answer is going to go in the bin ands label. We'll, we'll find out if it works right here. All right, configure, and then I'm going to configure the text to say whatever the binary answer was. So I'm going to have to say global binary answer. Um, I don't know if this decimal number needs to be. Um, Say global decimal number. So the text to whatever the binary answer was. And after I do that, I'm going to have to say decimal number. I'm just going to set it back to zero. And I have to say. Um, binary answer set it back to zero all right <laughs> not sure what's going to happen here but can't hurt to try right all right so here kind of comes so let's do an easy one let's say one there you go oh i haven't actually <sighs> oh, man. and I got to actually write convert to binary. All right, so now let's try. It should be zero, seven zeros and one one. Let's see what happens. All right, so let's see here. If the decimal number is greater than Or equal to, or equal to, and then after that, I also have to subtract from the decimal answer. That's what I need to do. Okay, so I need to say decimal number. Um, is this one number minus equals and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to subtract whatever that value was so if it's greater than or equal to it then I'm going to have to subtract whatever that value was alright <laughs> 
Oh man, this is funny. All right, so let's see. Ready? Hey, let's try two. Right. Uh oh, unsupport operand type for int string binary answer. Okay, so binary answer I need to set to this. So what I just did was I accidentally set the zero instead of the string that it was before and didn't understand what was going on. Um, so I set to a string down there. All right, so let's try eight. One, two, four, eight. All right, let's try now 255. And it worked. Let's try zero. Zero. Let's try 16. I'm surprised. Honestly, I'm surprised it worked because I, <laughs> I was I was thinking I was like you know I was like how did I do this before? That's the awesome thing about this is like it's not going to be something you necessarily get right away. Um, you know, two fifty four. It's going to be all ones and a zero at the end, right? So this works, and even if I want to use this up here, right? One zero one zero one one zero one, and I convert it. Binary entries is not defined. Did I really take out? <laughs> no. All right. I like took out. Hmm. Hopefully you guys didn't weren't, weren't as silly as I was and did this. I created my list of binary entries before, and then for some reason I deleted them binary one entry and let me go through and do this and while i'm doing this let me just say that like you might find an entirely different way one two three four you might find a differently way different entirely different way i'm gonna try to do two things at once i can't talk right one two three four five six seven eight so binary two binary three you might find an entirely different way to do this, um, or just like a simpler way. I thought this was, in my opinion, the quickest way of doing it, even though I took a little bit of time there thinking about things. And I, I, I try to, when you guys are programming too, like write things down. It might make more sense when you write things down and just work through it, work through your problem. All right, hopefully this works. Let me just put a bunch of zeros here and a one convert there we go so you know as you go through this so as you see like you can there and you see these two numbers should be the same right zero 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 one but you can do something entirely different down here if you want 253 right what does that look like and this is a way to solve a problem now it didn't take terribly long in order to do this um, you can always go through and change things if you really want to. You're like, I only want users to enter zeros and ones. Well, you, you can do that. There is a way to do that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I just want to make sure this is up and running. But let me just walk through once again um, what I did. So I only used one module imported to get into a module. I create a binary number list to just compile the numbers as they came in, right? Um, and some of you guys might choose not to do that. I don't know what other way you would like to do that, but, uh, and then I chose a decimal number where this was going to be my, um, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll reorder these to make them look nicer for you guys, right? Maybe I'll do something like this where, you know, my binary number originally and my decimal answer, right? And then my decimal number originally maybe I'll say like I'm going to use these in binary to decimal conversion and then I'm going to say like I'll use these in 
from decimal. I don't even know why I capitalized them, but whatever. They don't need to be capitalized. So I use a decimal number, which is this, and then my binary answer, I use a string, I used a string, a blank string originally. <clears throat> so this function just compiled the binary numbers. So I took all of these and just put them into this list, right? And I just put them in a list. And I converted them to integers. Maybe you can find a way around that. That's what I did. And then in order to convert this number into a decimal number, right? I went through and made sure to access my decimal answer that I declared up there. I had my global, um, my global variable. I set the exponent to seven. E is for exponent, and that's the variable name I chose. I set it to seven, and I compiled it. So I used this function, compile binary, and then for all the values. So I like for everything the while loop. Sorry, the for loop for everything in binary number, which is what I compiled in this, right? For everything in there, um, in order for the answer, I'm going to take whatever that value was. So if there was a one there, I'm gonna multiply it by two to the seventh power. If there was a zero there, zero times anything is still zero, so it didn't affect it at all, right? It just went through and zero time. All right, well, I added zero to it. So it went through each of the places. I subtracted one each time and it went through all the binary numbers, all right? Um, all of them that I had there. And then eventually I configured the label down here, made it look nice and cleared it out. I cleared it out so that way if someone wanted to use it again, right, they wouldn't have to close out the app. They could just do that, all right? Um, convert binary, I used both my binary answer and my decimal answer. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll flip those just for, um, oh, decimal number, right? My decimal number, my bin this is my decimal number, and this is my binary answer. I just flipped them, made them look like that. Um, but maybe you go through and say, all right, so the decimal number. Um, the one that was here, right? I'm going to go ahead and take that number and I'm going to store whatever that you entered in here. I'm going to, that's the entry.get, whatever you wrote in this entry, I'm going to convert it to an integer and then store it into this variable called decimal number, All right? And then I'm going to have my an exponent start with seven again, right? And for, and it's going to go through all eight Right, it's gonna go through eight times. Really, just go through this loop eight times. Okay, if the decimal number, okay, so if this number is greater than or equal to one sixty four, okay. So if you look at, or sorry, one sixty four, one twenty eight, sixty four, one twenty eight. If it's greater than one twenty eight, two to the seventh power. Okay, if it's if the number is greater than or equal to, then what I want to do is take the binary answer, okay, whatever my answer was down here, and I'm going to add a one to it, the same way we use our columns, our one, zero, one, zero. And then I'm going to subtract from it, right? The same way when we did our, let me add a green check mark down here because that works now too, right? Maybe I'll just add more space over here. I'll do it over here, right? If we looked and we said, um, let's say the number was, um, um, let's do 150, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This a little bigger, okay? So. Remember, this was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Okay, if this number is greater than or equal to 128, right, we're going to put a 1 here and then take 150 and subtract 128 from it, right? And that should give me a 4 there. Take my 10 there. 
and that should give me 22. Now that's basically what we did in this step right here. I'm taking, if it's greater than or equal to um, 128, then add the one in the column like we just did, and then take the decimal number and subtract whatever that value was, okay? So maybe you could even say that's like a variable and each time update that, but um, since we've used it twice there. Else, binary answer is zero, right? At the end of each time, we're subtracting one from E, so that number is getting smaller each time until it's one. All right. And then down here, I'm configuring the label. And I am resetting it each time. So there's my app. It works. If you want to go in and add color, add different things, um, clean up my code one more time here. I'll say... Here. All right, so this is what first part, my functions, right? I import thing up there. Then I've got my um, my buttons, my labels, my entries, everything that I have, my list of entries, which I accidentally deleted the first time, and then the rest of my code. It's funny because if you look at what I, I mentioned this earlier, if you look at what I created before, and this was, look, January 22nd, right? I mean, this one, January 22nd. This is how I did it before, right? So I went ahead and, like, look at this. Uh, it looks a little bit different, but look, I added my 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, right? Instead of, I, ha I actually added that. That was extra. Something that I kind of found a way around doing down here. I'm interested in seeing how I did it down here. So in calculating binary number, um, I did some of this, right? So, yeah, a little bit different. Let's see what it looks like. I also added some more space there. That's something else I did. I um, let me see what I did there. I guess I created like a extra label where I padded it one to two. But as you see, my first time through was a little bit different than my second time through. So just know that it might take some time for you to maybe understand some of these concepts. I really challenge you to take your time and work through it, that it's very easy to look at this and give up. It's very easy to just say, you know, that's a lot. My brain hurts. But I guarantee you the first time that I looked through a lot of this stuff when I was a student, I did not understand all of it right away. Think about it. Write things down. Rewind things. Watch it again. Right? Now, this is a long video, but there's a lot of useful information in here on how I've compiled this. And that's why like lists and for loops are so powerful. There's so many things you can do with it. You could write the same bit of code and create a ton of different functions, right? And I mean, it's just, you want to write clean code. You want to write code that you understand more importantly. So uh, this is what I created for this project. All right. So I went through and did that. It says um, I did both of these things. Be creative. You're encouraged to add on to it. If you want to make it where users only add zeros and ones, that's up to you. And so sometimes you can enter like the wrong number, protect them from entering the wrong number. Maybe it pops up and says, hey, you shouldn't enter an eight or you shouldn't enter this number. Um, check your answers. So once you've completed it, check your answers here via the program you made. Okay, uh, take screenshots of your code in the code editor. So take some screenshots. Um, make sure that I see your code and then also the output. So I want to see your code and I want to see your, um, your window that pops up. And submit it. And this is the video walkthrough, so once I'm done this, I'll go ahead and add it to it. 
And do I need to use TK enter? Yes. You could use, um, you know, it is possible to not use TK enter, but I'm asking that you do. All right. So that's all I got. Hopefully you guys are able to walk through this and understand everything. Um, good luck on your project.